Three, two, one, and we're live. All right. Thanks again for tuning in to another episode of the Village Made Podcast. Today I have a uh, one of my childhood friends. You know, we grew up together in Laie and Toku, and um, we have Lewis today. Thank you again for your time. I appreciate it. And I'm coming all the way from Salt Lake, so thanks, brother. Thank you. Um, just to start, we want to give a shout out to our sponsor, C4 Designs. C4 Designs is a clothing company on a mission to keep our beautiful Nijin culture alive. So go ahead, visit him at c4dzynz.com. And uh, for any clothing, apparel, whatever you need. And at checkout, we have a special code for you to use, VMP15. That's the code at checkout. You get 15% off any of your shopping. Go ahead and uh, check out our sponsor, C4 Designs. But uh, let's just get straight into this. Um, Luis, uh, just, I guess, tell us a story of your your name, all of your names, uh, your family, and your people. Um, <clears throat> this is something I don't even know that much, but I'll no. tell you, yeah, what, you know. what I do know. Um, so, my family is from Samoa, um, from the village of Malie. And my mom and them grew up there, they moved. Angapo in Western Samoa. They went to a church school there, and then, man, I forgot the name of the school was, but the church got, the school got shut down, and then from, from then they moved to Hawaii. I think they um, first lived in Oahu. Oh, wow. Oahu, and then moved to Laie. How'd they end up? Do you know why, or I don't, I don't reason know. how they ended up in Laie now? It's probably because of the church. So, yeah. Um, and then uh, going back to your parents moving or your mom moving from Samoa, do you know why they moved or why they left? I know the church was probably the main reason, yeah. Reason. Um, and then uh, your last name, or I guess just go ahead and tell your what is your, your full name? So my full name is Louis Falesi. Um, but my Falesi side, I don't know too much. Dad, yeah, and then my mom remarried. Um, Tonavasa, so we go Tonavasa. So that Tonavasa side, I mean, everybody knows the Tonavasa is in Laie, so that's my my stepdad, that's his family. So the Saoni side, um, from what I was told growing up, um, my great grandpa, um, he, he found Maliatoa, which is the king at. Right. at the beach and he sh saved his life and because of that the Malietoa gave uh, my great grandpa the last name Saoni and it's um, I guess it's supposed to be like a high title in, in Samoa but um, that's how we got the name Saoni is that's the title that was given to my great grandpa and um, <clears throat> yeah so my mom has nine siblings. All of my mom's siblings live here except from her older brother, which still um, represents the family, the Saoni name in Samoa. And so, yeah, that's the history as far as I know. Okay. Uh, so you're related to the, uh, I forgot his name, uh, Clayson? Yes. That's your yes. cousin? Yeah, so his dad, and, Saoni. his dad is my mom's youngest brother. Oh, okay. Gotcha. Dang, that's cool. Um, And how many siblings do you have? Only me. Me and my brother. And then I have two half siblings. A sister and a brother. Never met them before, but. Um, And now, I guess, tell a story of your village and the community that you came from. Um, Talk like, about childhood. Oh, childhood. So um, you were born and raised? I was born in Arizona. Okay. Well, my dad was in the military, and he was stationed in Arizona. That's that's where I was born. But I was only there, I think, for a year. And then we moved to um, to Hawaii um, in Kauku on the third lane. That's where I think two years was there. And then we moved to Lai, and we've been there ever since. So 
Here we go. Third yeah. lane. Third mm-hmm. lane. That's where I'm at. <laughs> <laughs> and then uh, I guess as far as, you know, being raised in like, yeah, what was that like for you? How was childhood? Oh, I loved it. Loved it so much. I put it on my left shoulder. Yeah. There you go. Um, But yeah, it was nothing like how it is today. But I mean, just the friendship, the love, uh, being able to go outside and do whatever you want. You know, and it's it's crazy. You uh, you still have the same friends that you grew up with, or you still keep yeah. in contact today? I do, I do. It's all the boys, huh? Yeah, that's cool. Um, I guess growing up also, and in childhood, what were some of the Samoan traditions that were taught to you in the home? Um, respect, respect, love. And service, services is probably the biggest, you know, helping out each other, which is what I still do today with my kids, you know, to serve any way we can. Cool. Um, I guess for, like, also growing up, um, was it easy to find your identity? Or did, like, did your culture help you? Or did it hinder you? Or did, like, the community or did religion help you find your identity, or did it help you help to hinder you in any way? Um, identity, <clears throat> I think. Um, as far as identity, um, I don't think I really found out until now, like just recently. And I think a lot of it is because of the way that we was raised. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we was raised to we was raised on tough love, to be tough. You know, we hide our emotions. We fight and I don't know, you know what I mean? So yeah. you don't really have time to find out who you really are. Right. Yeah. And it wasn't until um, in, what, 2007, I went on my mission. I went on my mission in Idaho and kind of gave me a different perspective of who I am and um, what I need to do in this life. That's cool. I uh, I'm glad you mentioned that, you know, this tough love and. I mean, I guess now that we're here in, in America, you know, and living in the American culture versus, you know, living the, you know, for you, living the Samoan culture, it's two totally different cultures. Oh, whereas yeah. the American culture, you say, I love you, or, you know, words are used. Whereas Samoan culture, just uh, put a Band-Aid on it and <laughs> go outside or, you know, keep playing or, you know, there's no you know, no sense of that. But I'm glad that... uh you were able to find your identity, you know, or, you know, continuing to, to figure out who you are and, you know, the identity that you have. Um, in certain situations, I guess, growing up, did you ever find yourself not feeling Samoan enough? Or did you ever feel too Samoan at times, maybe? Um, not really. I think I grew up to be a lay boy, and that was it. Yeah. And that's all that really mattered to me, you know, at that time. So being Samoan was just being Samoan, yeah. But I think the culture of being from Lae is a culture in itself, you know what I mean? Because it's, I mean, everyone knows it's a melting pot for all of Polynesia, you know what I mean? You come across Fijians, my friends are Fijians, Hawaiians, Samoans, Tongans, you know what I mean? And so I think it's a culture in itself that that I adopted, you know, so... As far as the Fa'asamoa, I don't even know. You know what I mean? Only what was taught um, within my house, in, within my home. Uh, you mentioned being a lawyer boy. You want to talk about that? Like what it is? Because I guess some people, you know, when they hear the, you know, hear lawyer boys, they probably have, you know, depending on what, like what, where they, they hear things from. But for me, my you know how I view lay boys is totally different. Maybe totally you know different from other people. But you want to talk about that as a brotherhood, or like talk about it as. Um, it's just it, it's hard. It's hard to explain, right? You know, and it's hard for people to understand. Just like how Fiji said in his song, but I mean, to give a very broad explanation on what it is is just being there for each other, right. being down. Um, no matter through the hard times and the good times, you know what I mean? 
always uplifting each other. I mean, it goes really hand to hand with the church, you know what mm. I mean? And so that's pretty much it. That's cool. I like that. Uh, so is it easier to adapt to the American culture and in turn lose some of that Samoan culture? Or is it you think there's a balance of l wanting to hold on to the Samoan culture and the American culture? Um, I think you have to find a balance. I, I forgot. I heard it one time at church where they said that if the Samo if you're if the culture beliefs conflict with the church beliefs, then you always go with the church beliefs. That's the balance, you know. And there's there's a lot of examples that 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 I can give that you know what I mean where it conflicts with each other you don't want to talk about that let or me give you one example yeah. one example Go ahead. so I remember in um, growing up the teaching was if you're on a ship and you had your mom on one hand and your wife on the other hand who do you let go in the Samoan culture you let go of your wife yeah mom but in the church you let go of your mom because that's your wife your wife is your first is that's your priority you know what i mean and so just that right there just explains a lot you know what i mean as far as having a balance between the american culture and and the Samoan culture or polynesian culture it's interesting because i just uh i think it was earlier this week i was talking to someone and, you know, they talked about being uh, a Samoan American or being a Polynesian American in this time. There's no, like, manual to tell you, you know, like, what or how to live as a as a Samoan American or how mm -hmm. to live as a Tongan American, you know, as Polynesians in America. And so we are figuring it out for ourselves, you know, as we continue on in our journey in life. We're trying to figure that out ourselves, you know. And so that's something that for you who has, you know, your kids, that's something that you got to figure out for yourself what yeah. you want to pass on to your kids, yeah. whether it's the gospel or whether it's, you know, the, the, the Samoan culture. Mm -hmm. So I think that's cool that, you know, you brought that up. And then as Polynesians, I guess, um, what are some things you think that we, whether culturally or like socially, what are some things that we have to unlearn? Unlearn bringing each other down, you know, they say what? Crabs in the, we're like crabs in the bucket. In the bucket yeah. yeah, we're we're trying to make it in this life and compete in this life. It seems like every time someone goes up, someone always brings us down. And it's always someone in our circle, yes. or someone in our community, yeah. or someone in our you know. Yeah, I like that. Man. That's cool. I'm glad you brought that up because yeah, you, you know, there's a lot of examples, or you know, there's things around. And I guess for you, what are you doing now? whether it's in your business or, you know, in your family, to try to exceed that or try to, you know, be above that. Maybe not being above it or just trying to, like, you know, unlearn it, you know, or trying to teach other ways instead of bringing others down, you know? Mm -hmm. I, I think it's just to serve, <clears throat> to serve without receiving anything back, and to serve with the open heart, open mind, being open to a lot of things that, probably was unpopular, you know, for us growing up. Um, but I think that's the biggest thing is to serve. I think, too, when, you have, when you're serving, you know, you don't have time to be looking around, yeah. or, you know, time to be doing or looking at other people's uh, business or just staying in their lane. But, um, and I guess for, you said that uh, you've, after high school, you went on a mission mm -hmm. to Idaho. What was that experience like for you? I, I know you talked about the identity side of it, but how was the mission itself? Oh, I loved it. I loved it. A lot of people tease, you know, because of that movie, you know, the, uh, the best two years. Yeah, he was served and he was called to Idaho. Idaho. But I, I learned early on in my mission from my mission president that um, it's not about the place. It's about the people. Uh, you get sent to a person rather than a place. So if you go and find out who that person is that you're there for, then it makes it um, much more, I 
trying to say. You appreciate where you serve, where where you're called to serve, and you see God's hand um, right in front of you every day. I'm sure you had a lot of apostles come through, huh? Because you're close to Salt Lake, or there, there was or a few. Really... There was a few more area of seventies than apostles. Uh, did you learn to learn the language? Was it a language speaking? Yeah, no. English. <laughs> Right, proper coming English. From, like, yeah, you know, from our side. <laughs> yeah, when Speak I first went, when I first went over there, no one understood me. You know what I mean? So I had to understand. I had to speak proper. And so yeah, that's a learn. That's a language for me. Yeah. I'm sure that's helping you now with business. Oh huh? yeah, of course. You gotta learn how to. <laughs> you gotta talk, talk to these uh, talk owners to and yeah. all these high people. That's cool. So um. I guess go ahead and like tell us or talk about what you got into, you know, the business that you're into now and how all that started, the name of your business so, and how it started. Oh. So the name of our business is called Rad Cleaning Solutions. And so Rad comes from my three kids, uh, Risa, Anthony, and Drew. So, but when we first came up with it, Rad is like a Balangi word that, Right. They use a lot here, yeah? like refer to something amazing. Just you know, that's like cool. rad. That's yeah, rad. rad. You know what I mean? But um, in reality, it's sentimental for my kids, and so um, that's where that came from. And then, what do you guys do? So in the the, the business, um, clean residential houses and commercial buildings, everything as far as cleaning. Um, post constru- post construction, um, anything that you can clean, um, that's what we do. Gotcha. Um, I guess tell the story of how it all started for you guys. How did you guys come up with the idea to get into business, mm-hmm. and how did that start? So um, I think when when we moved here, I always knew like there's something more. That uh, when did you guys move here? Sorry. Uh, 2014. From Hawaii? From Hawaii. We came here. Um, my sister-in-law couldn't have kids. So we came up here, and she adopted one of mm. one of our sons. So we came up here to give birth. We are supposed to go back, but seeing the opportunity out here, so we stayed. I guess it helps having a lot of other people from home, you know, back oh, home here. Yeah. So this is almost like a... <laughs> Almost like a little, like, yeah, you know, a little cocoa. Mm-hmm. So that kind of helped you guys um, wanting to stay here. Um, I guess for you guys in starting business, if you could have started your business sooner, would you have started bu- sooner? Yeah. I feel like I'm behind. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, if you look at the successful people today, they, they was banking at 19. You know what I mean? So I have a lot to catch up. And then I guess... Just talking about the beginning, how did it start with your wife? I guess talking to that, you know, how we talked about it earlier. Yeah. In, on so the- my wife had a friend. She met, um, she met this lady at the bank. They became friends, um, and she shared to her what she did in California uh, while she was going to college, which was a cleaning business, and um, and she did it because the overhead cost was cheap, was low. And and so it just so happened that my wife got laid off in de- in December of that same year, and I told her let's just go with it, let's let's just run with it. I don't even know what we were doing. <laughs> I didn't even know about taxes. I didn't know about nothing. You know what I mean? Yeah. But just the fact just went off of what she said that you know if we could buy our supplies mm-hmm. from Walmart, you know, and then I don't know go knock doors, knock doors, and 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 go out there and uh, and offer our service to anyone. How how hard was it in the beginning to take that leap of faith? You know how you said like, oh, let's just run with it. Mm-hmm. Was that something difficult for you to do, or was that easy? It was easy to take the step, but when you have to pay the bills next month, then that's where the hard stuff comes in. So, did you have a job that you had quit? before and then get into this business yes so 
so I was working construction. I always thought that construction was was the job to go. You know what I mean? And um, I realized quick that that's not what I wanted to do. And so, um, yeah, so I did quit. I quit, and we ran with this ever since. Yeah. So that leap of faith wasn't as hard to start the business, but it was to quit the job and wanting to pay bills. Yeah. Or the money to. <laughs> it was hard both ways. Yeah. Gotcha. Because you give up, you give up your secured income, you know, right. to an income that um, that you have to create. And so, if you're trying to create something and you have no blueprint, then of course you're going to struggle. You know what I mean? But I mean, you got to start somewhere. And along the way, I guess, did you guys pick up mentors or did you guys get help from anyone? Um, yeah. Whether, like, they helped you, like, with advice or whether they helped you, like, oh, maybe th you guys need to do this with your taxes or just any help along the way? As far as, as far as cleaning, um, being in the industry, I learned a lot of the stuff from coming across other contractors through other, other businesses, um, through other companies that shared, you know, like, this is what you need to do, this is what you need to do. Um, this is how you should bid, you know, you should bid this way. You should ask for your price, ask for upfront money. You should, you should do it this way. And so we just went, we just learned along the way and, and got to where we are today. Yeah. yeah. So are you guys more comfortable now with your bids and oh, of like with, you know, yeah. the whole situation? Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. The confidence goes out the roof. And how long have you guys been in business? Um, it's going on two years now. Two years, but. Probably gonna be our first year we probably know what we're doing <laughs> you know yeah two years took us to find out what it takes and and what we need to have and what we need to learn so in the last two years was there ever a point where you felt like giving up oh, all the time all the time but i mean if i i i was never a quitter you know what i mean and so if i give up then it just has a bad ripple effect, you know what I mean? Not just for myself, but for my kids and for generations after that, you know what I mean? And so it, anything that I do, I always push through it, even though, it's, even though it's hard, you know what I mean? I can't say the same for my wife, but, you know, that's what, that's what my role, you know, I have to be some sort of confidence for her, you know? But it's, it's, it's hard, but... It's worth it. It's worth it. That's cool. I like how you talked about your kids. Because your kids see, you know, mm -hmm. what mm -hmm. you do. And so, you know, if, you don't, if you're not the one giving up, then, you know, they have a good example of that. Yeah, I like that. Um, so, I guess for you guys, you guys get pretty busy or you guys stay pretty busy? Yeah, yeah. So, being busy, how do you manage stress? Um, around the circle. <laughs> On the on the there's weekends, outlets for yeah, it, yeah, there's outlets for it. Um, I think the church has a big part of it too, you know, being in tune with God, you know, and and understanding your role. I mean, that and yeah, having outlets for it helps out a lot. Um, I guess for you guys, what does uh, success look like to you? How would you define? Is success to me is um, as long as people I can help. You know what I mean? I think lately, recently, I just I understood what my purpose is, which is to help people, and so our people specifically. And so um, I feel like nobody knows who we are yet. You know, and so if I could make a change and provide opportunity for our people to be successful and, and be competitive in, in this world, I think they'll come to find out soon, you know, that we're just a, a hidden gem out there. I agree. I feel like we have, as Polynesians, have a lot to offer the world. Oh, yeah. You know? And we're just still tapping into that potential. We, you know, just barely scratching the surface with this stuff. Um, earlier, too, we talked about, like, a Samoan astronaut. 
mm-hmm. you know, that just recently became an astronaut. Like, oh, yeah. you know, for our people, like, that's crazy, you know, coming from the small island, mm-hmm. you know, being able to navigate not only oceans and seas, you know, our ancestors, but us and our generation now, we move here and we're trying to navigate mm-hmm. this new world that we live in, you know. And so I guess for someone like you, you know, just trying to navigate, you know, and trying to find your purpose, I guess mm-hmm. that's pretty cool. I guess for those, the young generation trying to find their purpose, do you have any advice for them on how to do that? Um, don't settle. Never be satisfied. Um, opportunity always comes around. If you miss it, another opportunity will come. You have to be open to it. You know what I mean? If you're not open to it, then you're just going to be stuck which is what a lot of our people, a lot of our parents, my parents was like that. They're still stuck today. You know what I mean? Still struggle today. And I think that has a ripple effect in that. I guess we got to just, for our parents, yeah, give it up to our parents because they did the best they could with yeah. what they knew. You with know? The resources they yeah. had. And Imagine moving to a, a foreign country, not speaking the language. Yeah. And that's, you know, when they came over. And so I guess it's, it's on us now on our generation you know because we have the whole experience of moving to america and living in america mm-hmm. you know, to pass it on to our kids and pass it on to the generations coming up um i guess as uh with the success that you've had that you have now what would you tell your younger self what advice would you give your younger self um give advice to my younger self first of all I would slap him <laughs> um, it took me so long it took me so long to grasp what this world had to offer you know what I mean and just had a lot of distractions that, that distracted me um I guess for you've already found your your purpose. You talked about your purpose. Is there uh, other like passions that you found that you kind of got into or not yet? Um, my passion that I recently um, found out was business. You know what I mean? Um, I've learned that true true financial freedom is. You have to have control of your money. If you don't control your money, then you'll always be stuck. And so my passion is is not as far as the industry or what industry I join. It's the passion that I have control of my money and, and that money is going to create different options, not just for me, but for other people. You know what I mean? Dang, that's cool. And I guess for you, learning about the you know this passion that you have for business, what are some things that you're doing to learn more or to grow yourself? Um, changing my mindset. Change, mindset is huge. You know, Changing my mindset um, and giving up the things that's been distracting me this whole time. And there's a lot of distractions. Is that, it hard? Oh, yeah. To it's give hard. Up those distractions? It's hard. It's hard, but when you give it up right? and, you, and you go through what you – need to do it 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 becomes easier and easier you know i i follow you i told you this i follow you on uh on facebook mm-hmm. and i saw that you posted that 10x book was it a book yeah yeah and i thought that was cool you know for you know i guess along with what you're saying with changing your mindset you also you know you got to read and then you also become you know whatever you read or whatever you hang, whoever you hang out with mm-hmm that's you know where your mindset goes or that's how you or that's who you are you know yeah because of the books you read and the the people you hang out with so that's pretty cool that you you know (laughs) got into that book did you like that book oh it's my favorite book i mean i guess obviously yeah since you posted about it 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 changed everything in the way i in the way that i think now you know i it we was always taught to save um, to be grateful for what you have and and to just go to school, go to college, and that's how you're going to be successful in this life. 
That was like the traditional way, Yeah, right? that's the tradition. Way. You go to school, get a good job, then work until you retire. Yeah. And so, and the other reason why I, I love it is because it, it's a rule. So you 10, you 10x everything. So um, spiritually, you 10x that. In business, you 10x that. You know what I mean? So if your goal is to make a thousand dollars, I times that by ten, and then I have to times I have to do the same thing with my actions. My actions and my goals have to match. If they don't match, then you you go backwards. You know what I mean? So yeah, it changed it changed everything. It changed the way I think and the way I conduct myself today and the choices that I make. I'm uh, dropping some knowledge. <laughs> Here we go. <laughs> That's cool. Well, I guess. As Polynesians, what do we have to offer the world? What can the world learn from us as Polynesians? Man, there's a lot. Um, I think the biggest thing is love. Love, man. Like, there's no love like how we love. You know, our love is free. We give it out candy you know what i mean and people out there that's holding it you know they 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 don't want to give it out they only give it out to their kids and their family but i think what we have to offer is and that's just one of it you know what I mean? one of the many attributes that we that we have i feel you as as polynesian we love hard you know and that's what we love hard and hate hard yeah <laughs> I agree. Well, my man, I appreciate your time. I appreciate you coming on and, you know, taking the time out to, to talk about this with us. Um, again, what is, where can we find you on social media, your company? Uh, Do you have a, a social media? That yeah, we we're, on, we're on Facebook, Instagram, Google. And um, we have a website, radsolutions.com. Um, yeah. And on social media, it's just Rad. Solutions. Yeah, right. Solutions. Yeah. Oh, well, I just have a few more questions just to end this off with, just to get to know you better. Let's go ahead and uh, open this up for you. Okay. Uh, just the first thing that comes to mind, go ahead and, uh, and, and just share that with us. Uh, what takes up too much of your time? Uh, probably social media. All the extra videos. <laughs> uh, what do you wish you knew more about? Money. Uh, what inspires you? Oh. Um, I think what ex- inspires me the most is is the opportunity that lays in front of me in the future. Um, so, like, I mean, I don't want to downplay anybody, but for me, I mean, we, we always hear that, um, our drive is our family, our kids. Like, to me, that's too small. You know what I mean? Like, my drive is, um, is to help other people. Is I mean, we come from a pool of talent back home that, I mean, it doesn't matter what, where they go in this life, they'll succeed, you know. And if I could create an opportunity for them or a road for them, and not just kids but families, you know what I mean, um, that's my drive right there. That's my drive. Man. Once you, I guess, once you reach that or, you know, and if there's anything that we can do to help you, man, let us know. Oh. We'll push together, you know, yes, like help yes. out. Um, what's your favorite book? I guess you kind of covered yeah. it. Yeah, 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. And uh, if you could spend a day with someone dead or alive, who would it be? My grandma. Uh, what's special about the place you grew up? Um, there's no other place like it. Uh, what have you only recently formed an opinion about? Oh, shoot. Traditional education dumbs you down big time. 
makes you dream small. I agree. You know, uh, yeah, we just, uh, I talked to Harris earlier today and he kind of mentioned the same thing. And I think that's cool that, you know, for you to, to bring that up as well, which is a occurring theme, you know, a thing that keeps coming up. Um, so what's the luckiest thing that's happened to you? Marrying my wife. Shout out to Aish. Shout out oh, to Aish. There we go. Pop, pop. <laughs> um, what song will guarantee to make you dance? Oh, Electric Slide. That's funny. Oh, so what are you most looking forward to in the next 10 years? Opportunity. Opportunity to serve. Opportunity to grow. And opportunity to create streams of income so I can you know, fulfill my purpose. Uh, what could you give a 40-minute presentation on with no preparation? The church. The truthfulness of the church. Here we go. Uh, what hobby would you get into if time and money weren't an issue? Tattooing. And uh, when people come to you for help, what do they usually need help with? Um, service. And when people, oh, what is something you think everyone should do at least once in their life? Do something that's against the books or against what you believe. Now, which of your scars has the best story behind it? Um, <clears throat> shoot, I don't know. I have a scar on my leg. On my ankle. What happened? I was at the farm, and I was playing around with the machete, with the pelu, and I cut the banana tree and it cut my ankle. <laughs> <laughs> and I and then after that I got, yeah, discipline. After got discipline. <laughs> uh, what helps you live in the moment? Um, my attitude. And finally, if you could get back to your village. How would you give back or what would you give back? Exposing the talent, exposing our our people on a bigger stage. Not just through sports, but everything. We are more than just sports people or, you know, our yes. bodies, you know. Well, my friend, I appreciate the time again. Thank you. Thanks for <laughs> being here and sharing your story. Much appreciated. Thanks for tuning in.